Renault Scenic is 20 years old and parked behind me is the fourth generation of the car which created the European compact MPV segment. The idea is simple, we take a compact car like a Ford Focus, Volkswagen Golf or a Renault Megane, pump it up a notch, make bigger boot, add some family options and voila, we have a compact minivan. It's a bit more expensive than a regular hatchback, but still relatively affordable, comfortable and safe. Renault is known for its safety record and predictably this Scenic also scored 5 stars in Euro NCAP crash safety tests. Just like the Espas, which debuted over a year ago, also the Scenic looks more like a crossover than an MPV. However, this time Renault does not call it a crossover, but simply a compact van. 20-inch rims are hard to miss, they give the car a modern look and this size is standard across the range. Albeit in lowest trim levels you get steel wheels instead of alloys. Alloy wheel design is different for different trim levels. This is the range topping Bose edition. Compared to the competition, Scenic is somewhere between Volkswagen Sportsvan and Touran. It is bigger than Ford C-Max. The extended wheelbase version called Grand Scenic is slightly bigger than the Touran. The boot volume is 506 liters VDA, which is measured using 20 by 5 by 10 centimeter wooden blocks. Total boot volume, including where these wooden blocks don't fit, is 572 liters, that is still considerably less than in the Touran. In the boot you get a couple of shopping bag hooks on either side, there is a double floor which makes loading things easy and under this double boot floor is, <clears throat> is a mini spare, that's an option in some markets. Now be careful about the parcel shelf, I tried it on my girlfriend, she's shorter than me so she doesn't have a problem with it but if you're 175 centimeters or taller Watch out for your nose. Seats fold flat, but backrests split 40-60. No, the Grand Scenic doesn't have three separate seats either. This is something you get in the C-Max, Touran, Espace or Kia Karens. I also wouldn't mind electrically operated tailgate, even as an option. Renault Megane, on which this car is based, is not the most spacious car in the back and Renault Scenic is the same. These seats slide forward, but that's good only for kids in child seats. There is also surprisingly little headroom, and that's regardless of me wearing this silly hat. Perhaps instead of making underfloor storage, Renault could have just dropped the seats an inch. Although there are air vents in the back, you don't get three zone climate control. USB ports and this large drawer are a plus. I also like the picnic tables on which you can put a smartphone or a tablet and you can attach something with these elastic bands. Hopefully kids won't realize they can also make quite a rocket. The cockpit is something between Megane and Espace. Top part of the dash looks the same, you get digital instrument cluster with a centrally mounted speedo, there is an optional fold-out head-up display, in the middle is a large R-Link to infotainment screen. A change for the better, piano black around the display has been replaced with this polka dot design, fingerprints don't show as much. Glove box is actually a huge drawer like in the Espace. But like in older Scenics, the center console slides. So option number one, you have access to your 12 volt socket, you get your cup holders and the person sitting in the middle in the back doesn't have any space for his or her feet. The other option is that uh, you lose the cup holders, you lose access to your 12 volt socket, but at least you have an armrest. Hmm. Now, I, I'm, just, I'm just pitching an idea here. How about we make this center console shorter, we fix it in one place, we get access to cup holders and the armrest, and now this this is crazy, but under this armrest there are a couple of USB ports and a 3.5mm jack socket and an SD card slot, but no 12 volt socket. How about we just move this 12 volt socket from there to here? Just an idea. Like Megane, Espace and Talisman, also Scenic is a victim of downsizing. 
you can choose between 1.2 and 1.6 liter engines. I get it, not everyone is buying an MPV to travel across the continent, probably most of the time this car will sit in traffic, but a Clio engine to power a 1500 plus kilogram minivan? That's a bit over the top, don't you think? And the 130 horsepower 1.6 diesel doesn't make the seating particularly sporty either. It's just enough for your everyday commute, but if you need to overtake and you're not on a dual carriageway or on a motorway, uh, perhaps don't, especially if you're traveling with your family and you've got luggage. I mean, then the engine is not sufficient at all. On the plus side, the brakes are very good indeed. The Scenic does very well up to about 100 km per hour. Above that there is a lot of wind noise. You can easily take it up to motorway speeds, but don't bother racing on the Autobahn. It's better to save fuel. Speaking of economy, I drove this car mostly in sub-zero temperatures, around minus 10 degrees Celsius, so I'm sure the figures are a bit off. I got around 6.5 liters per 100 km, Renault promises 4.5 combined. For 20-inch rims, the Scenic is surprisingly comfortable. Dumping is great and that's despite large rims and sub-zero temperatures, which stiffen Bilsteins on my MX-5. Visibility front and to the sides is good, but in the rear view mirror I see massive headrests. By the way, Renault also has this little mirror for you to watch what the kids are doing. This test example is additionally equipped with panoramic roof and a safety pack, which includes adaptive cruise control, lane assist, head-up display and a safe distance control system. This safe distance control system should be installed in every car. So far I encountered it only in some Renaults, in Citroen C4 Picasso and in an Opel Astra. The system shows me the distance from the car in front of me expressed in seconds or fractions of a second even. So the faster we're going, the shorter the time from the car in front. This teaches you not to tailgate. Prices of the new Renault Scenic start at 20,000 euro. This Bose edition with a 130 horsepower diesel with options costs about 35 grand. Renault Scenic has the best looks in the most boring car segment, but the competition offers more flexible interior arrangement and a greater choice of engines. Now, if you follow my reviews regularly, you probably noticed I criticize Renault for quality issues. I assume media test cars are the best a car maker has to offer. So whenever I find something substandard, I pick on it. Later on, I sometimes hear from owners that they did not experience such problems with their cars. I'm not trying to be a jerk, I just point out the shortcomings so that you pay attention to them when choosing to pay your hard-earned money for a car. And such feedback from the media also helps car makers to improve certain things. This Scenic gave me no problems. Great job, Renault! If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe and why not leave a comment below about what you think about the new Renault Scenic. Rate, share and if you think I could use some help, please contribute to my Patreon or PayPal. Links on the screen and in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.